use your time, we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to take this from being all about us, what FICO is going to provide, all these capabilities, all these powers. What do you do to turn it into personal success for you? As you think about this, you're going to be getting on the plane, you're going to be flying out of here, think, God, I saw a lot of things. What do I do next? So we'll talk a little bit about that. So first of all, it is a personal thrill in my life to be up here on the stage after Gary Kasparov. What an amazing thing, right? I'm a chess aficionado, 224 months, or 225 months of 228, Gary was ranked number one in the world. Unbelievable straight, unbelievable run, right? This gentleman has uh, found success personally at a very young age. Now, I've met many of you in person. I know a few of you, I know many of you really well. Uh, if you don't know, I come from a small town in Michigan, and I have to tell you, I have a little bit in common with Gary Kasparov, and that way back when, I had some good success at chess in early age, too. Yes, I'm here to tell you, Tim Van Tassel was ranked number three in Mason County, Michigan in 1982 in the six to 10 year old competition. So in this age of fake news, you're probably looking saying, this could be one of those humble brags that I've seen that's not really true. And I thought what I would do is actually show you that you can actually affirm this. <laughs> but then I realized that I was given third place, so maybe I wasn't even competing with anybody. <laughs> Enough about me, though. So about you. We talked about this. 57 countries are here, all the way from Argentina to Zimbabwe. I couldn't make that up if I tried, right? You represent countries that span 71% of the world's population. Uh, that, to me, is amazing. Now, you think about what do you share in common if you look at who's actually in the room? You understand analytics. You're applying analytics. You're here because you care about where you're going to take analytics. I hope that you've met people while you're here that you've found things in common with. You say, wow, this is somebody that's doing things just like I'm doing, right? You know the hardest thing for FICO? Hardest thing for FICO is to find the person in the organization that actually gets analytics. You're that people, right? We love that about you. You're part of a broader family now that's attending these sorts of events. Some of you being here, it's your first time to actually come to a FICO world. Others have been here many, many times, been here perhaps all your careers. Some of you have moved from being junior analysts to executive vice presidents because you have put your intellect on top of the platforms that FICO enables. We love that about you. We want to grow with you. We want you to challenge us. We want to challenge you with ideas. One of the things that you think about as you're part of this bigger, broader family is you have the right to yell out to me anytime in this presentation and say, Tim, I would like you to go faster and funnier because it's the end of the show. So feel free to yell that out. But in the meantime, what I'm going to tell you is that we're here after the show to connect you with others that are like you. It doesn't end here. It turns out that we actually can help you connect to others that are like you on a regular basis. You could be a telco in the US that finds out there's a lot in common that you have with that telco in Australia that's worried about churn. You could be actually looking at customer exposure in the United States thinking, I bet there's something I can pick up from a Spanish bank. Perhaps you could let me talk to them. You could connect me in with them. Or you might be thinking about big data and how it applies to your infrastructure inside of a Brazilian bank and ask FICA, who could you talk to that's like that? Turns out there's a Nordic bank that would love to talk to you. You're part of the broader family now. We love to actually work with you coming out of this. But when you think about how you actually work with FICO, realize that of the 30 languages that are spoken in this room, you're actually each unique. You're looking at this from a different perspective. You're looking across all these challenges. You're looking at this and saying, man, there's all these different things that I could do. You're unique in your perspective. I did a little cloud art here, a little word art to basically say, I'm going to put all the session together and jumble them into one piece to say, what does this all mean? This is probably jumbling around in your head right now. Data's at the center. I couldn't have put it there if I wanted to. The reality is FICO's trying to lean in now. You've seen all of Stuart's tools that help you lean into your data, understand how to get things into that decision capability that we wouldn't have worked on before. What I'm here to tell you is that of the hundreds of products and services that Stuart enables, there's a whole ecosystem of people, of experts, that will speak your language and helping you actually apply this to your business and your personal success. So let's talk about that language that you speak a little further. If I look at it from a country perspective, a geography perspective, and then an industry perspective, and then a solution area perspective, what ends up happening is there's actually many worlds, three worlds you could say, three worlds of vernacular. 
You might speak about GDPR, you might speak about IFRS 9, you might speak about CECL, you might speak about PSD2. I could go on. You expect us to have that very specific context for the business that you operate in. Not just the overall country, but the actual specific industry too. I love the sophistication of this when we actually bring it to bear to delight you with what we're able to do. We operate in all of these fields now. If you thought about this five years ago, you'd never thought of FICO as being a significant player in telco. Turns out that we are now. If you look at this inside of specific actions we're taking around bureau and data availability, we're doing things globally. We're trying to work with you each in the way that makes sense for you. So what's the key when you look to actually unlock all of this domain experience that exists across FICO? What's the key? What's well, sitting next to you probably right now? Probably within arm's reach. It's your client partner, right? Your client partner is the way you get to this broad set of expertise and pull it in and make it actually something that works for you. Now, it could be that you've already worked out a three-year roadmap to unlock business value and change things within your organization with your client partner. Could be you've already had an innovation day, flown those executives into Silicon Valley. Could be that we actually flew our executives to meet you. Or it could be that your client partner really just takes care of picking up the dinner tab. What I'm here to tell you is they can do a lot more from you and you should challenge them if they've not done these sorts of things. You're gonna see there's a whole host of things going on around the products to make you much more successful. First off, for those that are new to FICO, the client partner actually has a whole host of folks that work around them that actually make them successful. In making them successful, they're making you successful to understand what exactly FICO can do specific to your vision. You've met pre-sales people that are experts on products and solutions specifically. You've actually probably come across some of these folks that we have called advisors, business consultants, people that are practitioners from industry, former CROs, former CXOs, different positions that actually come in and say, hey, I've walked a mile in your footsteps. How can I actually help you make the most out of what the solutions are that you're, you're working on with FICO? An unsung hero within FICO is our professional services arm. These guys are experts in actually putting in the applications that we work with. They've done it dozens of times. You might do it once in 10 years, once in five years. There's ways to leverage their skills. Analytics is involved in everything that we do. You don't put in a FICO solution if you're not aspiring to actually put in analytics, right? What you'll find more often now is we're actually bringing the analytics and the software together at the same time to talk to you at the beginning of a discussion about what we do together. If I think about Solution centers out front, you've actually met the product managers. The product managers travel all the time. They care about what you're doing in your local market. I think that's one of the things that sets FICO apart is you actually can call and talk to the product manager directly about what you're trying to do. And then finally, we have this concept of subject matter experts where we've hired people to make sure that we don't waste your time. We've hired people that are experts in telecommunications or in automotive, or if you're a credit union, a credit union expert, somebody who can actually guide FICO to ensure that we're doing the right sorts of things for you. And then lastly, AWS, uh, Klaus Molt, et cetera, we actually need more people that have this sort of background to talk to you about how to get the most from cloud. There's actually a specific set of people within FICO that are cloud subject matter experts. We call them mini Klauses, right? These are cloud ambassadors. They exist throughout the world to talk to you about the sorts of questions that you have about applying the cloud in your environment, whether it's hybrid, whether you're trying to uh, do something really incrementally over time. This ecosystem's exciting, but there's a host of things happening behind this. Many other waves of change are coming your way. You may have seen these, you may have not. I'm gonna quickly walk through them so that you're aware. I think of them as four ways, but you can think of them as some of them already hit the beach. Local domain knowledge, standardization, ecosystem, and platform. We've certainly talked about platform. I'm going to talk to you about it in a business context, and then making that business case, joint ROI. We all want change, but it costs money. How do we actually make the case for business change? So the first piece, I like to talk about Stuart Wells' product organization and the concept of a violin. Violins are beautiful, beautiful, wonderful instruments. They're beautiful to admire. I could admire them. They're very, very difficult to make. They're very difficult to produce those things. Stuart Wells' organization produces the most wonderful products, the most capable capabilities that there are. However, those are sitting in the room. What are you tasked with doing? Not admiring the violin. You're expected to be able to play it, right? You're expected to be able to play it well. 
And what do you expect from FICO? Well, you better be able to explain to me how to play it well. How can we work together to be able to make this work in a way that actually provides you a competitive differentiation in your specific market, in your specific industry, in your specific solution area? To be able to do this, FICO's got to be listening in the market. FICO's got to be relevant in the market. The first area is expanded advisory, where you're going to see that the advisors org is actually growing by 20% a year. More people that are in local situations that speak your language, that have been in banks, that have actually been CRs, they've been clients of ours, and now are working with you in an advisory capacity. Another thrilling area is we find more and more cases where clients are buying two, three, four products from FICO. We actually have individual engagement managers that span all of FICO capability that work with you that are not from services, they're not from PTO, they're for you. This has been a very successful change and I think it's indicative of where we're going in the future. Innovation days, we're on track to do 100 of these over the course of the year, 100 of them. Now, there's many, many ways that these can run. They can be very specific on your needs. The intention is to have you say, well, here's the five or six things that I'm working on and then we say, well, you know, here's three to four things that we can talk to you about that are very specific to those five or six things. Here's a couple of things you think about. And then we get together. I've actually seen these being very intimate affairs with five or six people total. But I was in Canada and there was 150 clients, client staff at one innovation day for a day and a half. So these can vary widely. But when you think about this, think in terms of the credit boot camp and the other things that you might do with FICO. How can this actually be beneficial to you to be able to understand what we can do together? Regional CXO forums, right? Whether you're talking about the APAC CCS forum, you're talking about the EMEA risk forum, regional masterminds and auto, we've really worked hard to say, we don't want to just meet once every 18 months in mass. We'd like to meet regularly in smaller focused panel groups to actually engage and understand what's happening specifically in that industry, specifically in that region, in a way that's material to you. These are much more intimate affairs, five, 10, 15 executives. Uh, I recently hosted one in North America where we had uh, Napa Valley and 12 of us, right? It's a fantastic situation, a lot of collaboration, lots of discussions. Analytics workshops are a variation that's sort of interesting and say, well, why would you run an analytic workshop, Tim? Well, the reality is we want to communicate in the language that analytics is being done in, right? So if you're in Chile, you don't want to talk about analytics in English. You want to talk about them in Spanish, right? So what we do now when we have a team going down actually delivering, we actually host a session, get a room in the hotel, get people to come by and actually spend time talking about what's happening in Chile and what's happening at FICO and interact. It's been shocking to me how quickly we can get 50 people to attend a session like this, how quickly we need Nikhil to actually get more rooms and more space to be able to make this occur. We've run these in Poland, we've run these in Mexico, we've run these uh, in Argentina and more and more places and we're gonna I think find these to be more and more effective because we want you to understand what's happening down at that detailed level with analytics and have that kind of discussion in the specific language that analytics are conducted in. And then industry practices, I think, have been a big change for FICO where we're really in it to stay in it. We're in telco, we're in automotive, we're in retail in some ways, we're in insurance to be able to stay in it. And what's happening over time is we use that subject matter expertise to modify what our products and solutions are so that they're actually capable in that market. Once again, an intention to not waste your time to be very specific about what we can do. All these things are bringing to your CP greater domain knowledge. You want to talk about automotive lending and you're actually from Thailand? Well, we can actually put you on contact with somebody who's a large automotive lender in the United States, right? The amount of connections we can make is getting greater and greater related to that local and domain experience and knowledge that you're interested in. Standardization is an area where if you're from IT sitting in the room, you're saying, of course I want standard. Of course I want standard, Tim. What else would I want? If you're from business, you say, I gotta get the business outcomes. Oftentimes what ends up happening is you get something that's really customized, turns out you can't upgrade it, right? What is doing now, since we've become much larger than we were even three, four years ago, we have practices now in services that are 60, 80 people that used to be 10 people. Repetition has allowed us to put expertise into the way that we deliver so that we can come to you and we can say, you know what, here's our standard way of doing things. Here's things that vary from the standard, and this what you're looking at is actually completely different than what somebody's done. 
Alan Wilson and his professional services team have put this together in a way where they call this standard package Originations Manager Professional Version, Decision de uh, Debt Manager Professional Version, and then there's a Professional Plus Version, and then there's a Premier Version. I love this because it allows you to critique rather than construct in the way that we actually work with you. You'll see more and more of this. The image that I want you to have in your mind is not the Model T assembly line that we've all seen so many times. Think of Formula One. You want to be able to roll into the pit, swap the tires out, but keep on barreling down the road at 230 miles an hour, right? That's what FICO is bringing to you. When we talk about ecosystem and platform, I'll just mention that platform services enable so many wonderful business things to be solved that I've really struggled to say, how can I show this in a single picture? Because what happens quite often is that FICO and our clients together end up focusing on very narrow things, and it's not apparent what the client is trying to solve as an overall ecosystem or what FICO is capable of doing as an ecosystem. This is a simple picture of how design time and runtime, analytics and execution work together across the customer lifecycle. This allows us to actually understand what you've already invested in, what you might work with us on, and what you're worried about and actually take advantage of that same underlying FICO platform service in a way that's deliberate. This is enabled, depending on your country's specific uh, data privacy laws, it's cloud deployable or it's on-premise, right? So we're looking at being able to bring hybrids to you of these capabilities. Finally, what's FICO all about? Analytics. This is about all levels of analytics. You could be just doing basic strategies. You could be doing models of models, two or three models, right? or you might be taking it actually to decision tree-based optimization, or actually all the way to real-time optimization, and maybe, maybe to that pinnacle that Stuart Wells has talked about of cognitive analytics. All of these things are where we want to go with you. We don't want to put in a software package and then never apply analytics. That's not what we're about. If you wanted low grade, you wouldn't have come to a FICO conference. You wouldn't have purchased from FICO. You're looking for something better. So here's just a quick example of this in effect. If I talk to a client about strategy director or account control, how am I handling account management, I don't want to just talk about FICO solution. I want to talk about how that solution actually works with the surrounding infrastructure that you as a client have already purchased. I want people to understand that. I want to say, here's the sort of data elements that we need to be able to compare to, right? Shouldn't be FICO saying, hey, just conform to the spec and let us know how it goes, and then we'll go live, right? The goal here, though, is to say, look, the reason you put in strategy control is that you want to be able to run optimizations. You want to be able to give that collections executive a monthly view, a monthly ability to change strategies all together to lead to different outcomes, right? Oh, and how do you do that? Well, you do that by actually understanding borrower response. Well, then how do you do that? We actually store it in the collection system. I think you can see my point that if we talk about the ecosystem as a whole, we get a better outcome as a whole ourselves, right? Your roadmap, our roadmap get merged together, but we get live faster. Joint ROI is a topic I think of most interest. Everybody in the room has said, man, that is some fantastic stuff I've seen. But the reality is, I have a hard time making a case for change within my organization. How do I make it through the budget cycle? Every year I've got to go up and I've got to fight for budget. So do we, that's the world that we live in. We make the same sort of cases that you make regularly, but I'm here to tell you, of all the client partners in the room, I'm pretty sure that none of them were accountants or in financial planning and analysis. So what we can do to help you is we can actually bring our financial plans and analysis folks to the table to talk about how specifically to make a business case in the terms that your chief financial officer makes business cases. This has been a big difference, and we're keen on doing this more and more where we can. I think the funny thing about this is a lot of people think that, ah, if I can just make it over that hurdle, right? Yes, we've made the, we've made the minimum, right? The reality is, is that you, as analytic experts, are competing against all the other mundane things that your organization wants to do. You got to get over that hurdle ahead of the SharePoint upgrade or all the other things that are a waste of time, where we talk about the budget being 15% discretionary. So you got to be able to make a case that's strong enough to get you over the hurdle, but doesn't get you in a situation a year, a year later where you've actually overpromised and can't deliver. So the two points of this are, how do you actually make the budget relative to the alternatives within the organization? FICO can help you speak in the terms that the chief financial officer speaks in. And the second case is, we want to be there with you when you're putting the hurdles up yourself after you make the case. 
too often we talk in qualitative measures. Ah, the system is more flexible. The system is easier to work with, right? And the business executives in the room are looking at me going, ah, those are great, but they don't pay the rent, right? I'm not a nonprofit. We should talk about the metrics on a regular basis. How many more applications do we think we're going to book? How many things are going to fund that don't currently fund? How fast is the time to approval change going to be as a result of what we're working on? Let's look at that together. So hopefully these are making some sense to you when you think about, hmm, as I head back on the plane, I got to think about these things. My advice to you, when I think in terms of what I do at FICO, and Stuart Wells calls me the academic part of the sales organization working for Wayne Huyard. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I will tell you is that if it's all about vision and not about execution, you know, that's crazy. That's hallucination, right? Then again, just going on about what you're doing is a nightmare. So think through of all the things that you've seen, what can you actually do that you say, this is where I want to actually go forward. This is what I want to do. And my point of talking to you today was to convince you that we're up to the challenge. Share your vision with us. FICO and your client partner are ready for that challenge. Thank you very much for listening to me speak, and I, I love the chances that we have together to be able to make you personally successful as a result. Thank you.